Let's start learning. Hey there. Welcome back to Mr. Tom Teaches Again. We've talked about multiplication and arrays, and we know that arrays are great tools for helping us to understand multiplication. Well, arrays can also come in handy when we look at the commutative property of multiplication. First, let's review the numbers in a multiplication sentence. The numbers we multiply together are the factors. The answer is the product. Multiplication is repeated addition. For example, look at this multiplication sentence. 3 times 4 equals 12. The first factor tells us how many groups? 3 groups. The second factor tells us how many in a group? 4 in a group. If we were to draw a picture, it would look like this. 3 groups, 4 in a group. Let's add them. 4, 8, 12. 3 times 4 equals 12. Now, let's show that sentence as an array. Arrays are made up of rows and columns. Rows go across, columns go up and down. Let's use the same equation. 3 times 4 equals 12. Our first factor tells us how many rows. 3 rows. The second factor tells us how many columns. 4 columns. Our array looks like this. 3 rows. 4 columns. Let's skip count to check the answer. 4, 8, 12. 3 times 4 equals 12. But what happens if we flip the order of the factors? Will the answer change? Let's try it using an array. We started with 3 times 4 equals 12. Let's flip the factors. 4 times 3 equals blank. Does that still equal 12? Let's find out. What does that look like as an array? The first number is the number of rows, 4 rows. The second number tells us how many columns, 3 columns. Our array looks like this, 4 rows, 3 columns. Let's skip count to find our product. 3, 6, 9, 12. 4 times 3 equals 12, so 3 times 4 equals 12, and 4 times 3 equals 12. We've just discovered an important property of multiplication. It's called the commutative property of multiplication. Whoa. The commutative property of multiplication tells us that no matter the order of the factors, the product will be the same. 3 times 4 equals 12? and 4 times 3 equals 12. Let's try one without a product and see if it still works. Here's our multiplication sentence. 5 times 7 equals blank. Set up our array. 5 rows. 7 columns. Here's our array. Let's skip count. 7, 14, 21, 28, 35. 5 times 7 equals 35. Now, let's flip the factors. 7 times 5 equals blank. 7 rows, 5 columns. Here's our array. Skip count. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. 7 times 5 equals 35. We've demonstrated the commutative property of multiplication again. Fantastic work, listen. Let's review. Let's review what we've learned today. A multiplication sentence is made up of factors and a product. Multiplication sentences can be seen as arrays. The first number tells us how many rows. The second number tells us how many columns. Using arrays as examples, we can see that when we switch the order of the factors, the product is still the same. 5 times 7 equals 35. 7 times 5 equals 35. This is called the commutative property of multiplication. Nice work, everyone. Parents, teachers, and homework helpers, please be sure to subscribe and turn on those notifications. A like will really help the channel, so please give us a thumbs up. Thank you so much for being here today. I look forward to seeing you again. Take care, and remember, it never hurts to be nice.